Y'all ready for this? <laughs> Are you ready for this? <laughs> I am. I am so ready for this. And that was almost timed perfectly. Almost. Uh, almost. almost. I'm working on it. <laughs> almost. You're getting there. Yeah, man. You're getting there, precious. You're going to make it. So what has happened to you since I last talked to you last week? Well, <laughs> turkey buzzard invasion. You told me about the possum. I did. It did not go well for the possum. <laughs> oh. It did not. It was a turkey buzzard cookout. All right, now that we've lost everybody that was listening. It never goes well for the possum. No. No, man. Not, you know, just getting more events online. Mm. Um, first quarter, actually all the way through April now, we have uh, agreements and stuff. So, you know, getting back out there. What? Can't wait. <laughs> Going to be exciting. Going to be exciting. What about you? People. What's new with you? People. Be putting people in seats. Butts and seats, Gene. Butts and seats. I got to interview one of my heroes on my other. I have another podcast, and I got to oh. interview. <laughs> Damn it! And uh, it went well, and I'm I'm very happy. Um, Who was it? It was Ellen it, DeGeneres. Wasn't it, it was. <laughs> I know. I know how you feel about Ellen. Yeah. Uh, is a, a gentleman named Tony Blower. He's a longtime martial artist. And nice um, man. Got to interview him in. Is, I made he's a also list. the Prime Minister of Canada. Yeah. Did you not know that? <laughs> he's from wow. Canada. No, I made a list of like 10 people I would like, if everything was equal, I'd want to interview. And he was one of wow. them. And he was the first one I reached out to. I thought that was like a 10 people I'd really want to interview. <laughs> and he's one of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I could just, I could just. Mm. So how did it go? <laughs> it went well. <laughs> It went well. It was a good conversation. We, we became friends. What? Or as did, much as you can become friends through. Did you talk cameras. to him later? Yeah. Are you really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, yeah. whatever. I'm not jealous. Yep. <laughs> I got other friends. My eyes cross all the time. It's not just when I'm jealous. Oh, man. Oh. That's funny. Oh, is it? I it can tell little... from your authentic laughter. <laughs> That you were just, yeah. All right, man. So did I tell you about the possum. You did. <laughs> God, so crazy. You know, if that possum had been a B Corp. <laughs> Good segue. I was wondering, how do we segue from possum to B Corp? It's pretty easy. Is it? We just did it. I don't know what a B Corp is. Mm. So you, your last newsletter <laughs> talks all about becoming a B Corp. And I looked yeah. at that and I was like, what the hell is a B Corp? Why would I even want to bother? Why would you want to bother? So it's it's funny because this started maybe three years ago. I think one of the first shops I heard of that was a B Corp was Firefly Partners and then probably Constructive. Um, and I didn't know what it was. I knew it meant that they were doing good. Okay. But I didn't know that it was like an official certification, um, anything like that. It seems like it's pretty involved. Yeah. So so what's happened is I would say there's probably maybe a dozen out of out of the four hundred ish bureau shops that are member shops and and figure I have no idea when it, when you get up to the ones that are part of the community, which is like three thousand. But if if you look at those four hundred, I'd say maybe a dozen to twenty okay. are B Corps. And, and so here's the thing for people who've never heard this term before. It basically uh, stands. I'm looking for it right now because I can't remember. It's um, it's not betterment. What's the word, Gene? Betterment. It's, it's not beneficial corporation. <laughs> what does it stand for? Look it up while I'm talking, and we'll act like we knew the whole time. Yeah, keep going. So, so basically, what it means is that you're not just going to be judged on your financial health. You're making a commitment to do good in the world. So you're, you're going to, it could be from the way you treat people, the, the way your product is manufactured, 
Okay. Your carbon footprint, that sort of stuff. I think the way that it was explained to me that I finally got it was what fair trade is to coffee, B Corp is to a service or product company. Hmm. Right. So they have they have signed up and been approved to maintain a certain level, a very high level of good. <coughs> gotcha. It, now, what's huh. interesting was I, I put in the newsletter that there was um, like, if, if you were going to be a B Corp, don't expect the uh, tax benefits of being an S Corp or don't expect, you don't get any additional benefits. But then I, I was corrected and I'm glad because this shows how confusing it was to me by our friends at Matchstick Legal. And they said, hey, you know what? A B Corp is more of a certification. So you can be an S Corp and a B Corp. Right. That's kind of after reading through it, what I understood. It was and, like an add on. And for me, you know, I was part of a BS Corp. Hmm? <laughs> kind of like this podcast. Corp. Yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah, this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, but so, yeah, so a B Corp is basically somebody who says, I am going to, and this is the way it felt to me, I'm going to subject myself right. to a high level of scrutiny so I can tell people I passed the, well, my company passed the test of being one of the best companies for humans in the planet that there is. Okay. Why would you do that? Why would you yeah. do that, Gene? I don't understand. Well, because you're not a good human. That's probably true. Probably true. Probably crew. Probably crew. Okay. So I'm looking at, I'm looking <laughs> at examples like companies that are B Corp. So mm -hmm. B Corps, we got Allbirds, Patagonia, uh, Frank and Oak, Bombas, Beauty Counter, Tin Tree, United by Blue, Ben and Jerry's, A Athleta, Empower. Yeah, Ben and Jerry's just joined. Yeah, they just showed up. So, so the, here's the thing. I think is the the reason it came back up in the bureau channels recently. I think I'm going to say I think I think I think a lot today. It's okay because I'm in a thinking mind. Better than saying I know, I know, I know, which I do not. <laughs> so when you are in, uh battle for talent, you need differentiators. Yeah. Right. Now, I'm not saying that the, the people who are B Corps became B Corps a while ago. There's some that are coming now, but it's a long process. It's almost like getting a line of credit. You have to get the line of credit when you don't really need it. Right. Right. Becoming a B Corp is a long process from my understanding. It is involved. It is going to take time away from other things so that you can do it properly. So doing it when you need to be one, it's probably too late for this need. If, if, if that's even why you're doing it. I, I, again, I don't want to assume that people are doing this to get something out of it. Most of them are doing it because it feels right. Right. But the benefit, if you are in a battle for talent and they have to choose between a company that's doing cool stuff and they like and another one that has been certified as one of the best companies there is when it comes to doing good. That's kind of a pretty big benefit, right, right? You know, it's going to differentiate you for sure. How big of a deal do you think that actually is? Like at the end of the day, I think it's pretty big because if you look at the best talent, mm -hmm. they want to make a difference, right? You know, okay. So I have become the you know best Java this that the best Django the best whatever developer there is. I am probably not going to work on projects that save the planet. I'm probably going to end up working on some sort of financial app, maybe right. a fantasy sports app, something that involves a lot of data crunching. Well, the closest I, thing you might come to is like healthcare or something. Yeah, right. So you might right. come to healthcare. You may come to, right. to something that's more mission driven, more charity based. Mm -hmm. Those things are going to be we know what it's like to work with some of these nonprofits, right? Like they're, they're not exactly, they shouldn't be called an organization because they are not organized. Yeah. But if you're working for a company that has made a commitment to do good with the profits they make, right. With, with the way they approach their work, then you kind of get to scratch that itch of wanting to be a good person while you've, when you've elevated yourself to the, the top level mm -hmm. of what it is you do. Mm hmm so I think it is a big deal in, in establishing the best talent and also in just feeling good about what you're doing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You're, you're, the mission of the widget you're building may not be to save the planet 
or to make people right. better. But it doesn't mean you can't from the profits of your business. Right. And, when, and by the same token, probably attract, attract better clients. Yeah. Attract clients who are like, you know, maybe they want to be a B Corp. Maybe they're, they are a B Corp. Maybe they just want to be associated with other companies so that when they go in to share with their higher ups or their executive team or whoever it might be, hey, these are the organizations we're thinking about working with. I'd be willing to bet you if you fought to become a B Corp and you've you've put that in your pitch and it's on it's in your marketing, it's kind of in your DNA now that when they're sharing with their board mm -hmm. or with their executive team, they're going to say, well, I'm their B Corp, right? And it'll either bode the question, what is that? Or it'll make people say, are the others? I think it's really a differentiator. Yeah. I do. But I think yes. it, it it's comes with a weight way. benefit organization. There you go. I really like Betterment. <laughs> you know, that's the why. The Department for Betterment of Mondays. That's why I decided yeah. not to become a B Corp because yes. I didn't like what it's doing. I didn't for. like the B. Didn't like it. Stand so benefit it. corporation. That makes perfect sense, right? So looking at the cons, uh, getting accepted is tough. Mm. Over 200 different criteria. What the hell? And then you have to be recertified every three years or so. Mm -hmm. So And then at the end, there's no real tax benefit. Yeah. So I think, again, this is the kind of thing you have to do because it's it's who you want it's what you want your organization to stand for. Right. You can't do it for the pros. I think the pros are just a really nice after effect, right? right. They're, they're a really nice side side effect of becoming a B Corp, right? Because you are, the, the time you put in, the time you're going to put in again three years from now when they probably have changed some of the criteria, mm -hmm. um, the, need, the changes you have to make in order to get the right scores to get the B Corp certification all feels heavy, but I think the thing that feels heaviest to me, especially if you're running a web shop, like even even if you're 50 right. people, there's going to come a time where you have to make a decision that out of context is going to feel like you did something that wasn't appropriate. Right. But in context, you did what you had to, to maintain the integrity of the team, the product, the client, whatever, right? So for example... I mean, this happened to us when we uh, when we joined with um, Trinet. Trinet's a great company, right? They they're basically um, they help you manage all your HR. They're now a sponsor of the show. No, they help you manage <laughs> your HR. They help you manage all of these different things. Um, but when you sign up with them, uh, there are now certain things you can't skirt. Mm. So we had a situation where we had payroll coming up. And we had a client check coming in and I needed to postpone everything one day, one day so that I could get the check to clear so that payroll would clear. If anybody listening to this runs a shop, you know what this is. Mm -hmm. You got caught in a little bit of a tight situation mm -hmm. and you tell your team, hey, everybody, sorry about this. We're just waiting on this to clear. Everybody will be cool. And the team knows, you give them the heads up. It's not like they go in and the money's not there. Mm -hmm. But when you're you're part of something like Trinet, right? A uh, professional employment organization, a PEO, uh, they say, no, that's against the law. Hmm. You, you have to pay them on the day it's due. We cannot stop the draw from your main account. This isn't possible. So I have to take from my personal line of credit, mm -hmm. right? And, and you can call it a company line of credit, but your ass is the one who's going to lose her house if the line of credit doesn't get paid, mm -hmm. right? So you take that line of credit, you cover it, it's fine, but it's not the choice you would have necessarily made had you not been part of that association. So now when you look at a B Corp, I think it's a similar thing. It, right. I, and I haven't been one. So anybody listening that is one, please respond. Please let us know. Yeah, I would like to but, hear about it. To me, it feels like there's going to come a time where there's a situation and you need to make a short-term call to weather a storm mm -hmm. that maybe you can't now because you're at a higher level of scrutiny. And maybe that's a great thing. Maybe that helps the whole industry level up and mature. I don't know. 
It could. Let me ask you this. If you were still running engine, is this something you would have looked at? No. No. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have because I was interested in going home on time. And and that was it, right? It's like I, I got I got to a point with with engine where I wanted to make sure everybody was taken care of, everybody was happy, we had enough money coming in, and I could get home on time. Mm-hmm. And I don't think there's any part of those four goals, minus the happy thing. It may have made some people very happy. I know it would have made some people on our team very happy. Um, but one out of four, yeah, I wouldn't have done it. What about you? Uh, no. No. No, I, I don't know that. It just feels like you need to be a business of a certain size. And I know that's wrong. You're going to be like, no, bullshit. Anybody can help anybody. But um, it just it just has that vibe, um, especially after some of the stuff you just said. There might be like operating rules with your employees that you have to abide by. Not that you would like want to cheat your employees or anything. Yeah. But, but the, the example you had of just like offsetting one day just to make sure everything's right versus putting your own personal – you know, whatever in jeopardy for that. I mean, it, um, that's a big, that's a big commitment above, yeah. and, above and beyond just making payroll. So here's another thing, right? Like let's, let's take that. And, and again, this isn't about B Corp. Now I'm, I'm talking about PEOs, but, mm -hmm. but it's that same idea of losing flexibility. The, right. the example that I gave, I had a second solution that I pitched to Trinet, which wasn't that uh, we would wait on the check to clear a day. I said, okay, I just won't pay myself. And I couldn't do that either. Because yeah, you're an employee, right? Because I'm an employee. So it's like, as an owner, I could no longer even take away from myself to promote the team. Like mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't protect the team at my own expense anymore. Right. Which if you're an owner, that shit's something you do all the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. hate it, mm -hmm. but, but you do it because you think that's your job, which also is total bullshit. That is not mm -hmm. your job. Well, the business is an entity that exists separate from you. Right. And you forget that, that you, you as the, even if you're a sole proprietor or whatever, the business is still a separate entity. Tell me um, about it. There were nights where engine would call me so drunk <laughs> and they would be like, Oh, we can't drive home. Can you just come get us? And I was like, damn you entity unto your own. Well, let's I'll be there. I mean, B Corp's cool. What sorts of things um, did you do as engine or even now as bureau, whatever um, that actually helps like your, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Your, what's the word they use to describe the B Corp? The, uh, uh, so, uh, your status, like that helps your, your footprint, your status footprint, you know, to look, to, to be better, not to look better, but to be yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. I was going to take, I was going to take a little issue with the word status because that feels like you're trying to look a certain way. You're going for the optics of yeah. it. But I'll say with Engine, the thing we did that I was proudest of was, uh, we, fought to keep art in schools in oh. Duval County. Well, actually in the state. And we actually went into like really challenged schools and it wasn't necessarily the students. It was the, the financing for the schools. Wow. And, and we tart, we tart and we tart. What'd you tart? We tart all over <laughs> the place. <laughs> yeah, we... <laughs> oh my goodness. That sounded <laughs> No, we, we taught art lessons to the kids, right? In sixth wow. grade. And we would teach an art lesson. And then they had a tile that they were to do. And it ended up creating this giant mural that said, keep art in schools. It had like a Florida state, mm. not Florida state, but the state of Florida, um, like the shape of the state was there. And, and so it created all these things uh, that we then were able to send to Tallahassee to fight to keep art in schools. It was amazing. It's cool. cool. Don't yeah, ask. So, well, being so that's kicked it right out. Didn't give a <laughs> shit. And no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no. I, I mean, it was a great thing. The other thing I'll say, well, it's um, Florida. Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's a kind. It's a mindset unto its own. Yeah. But no, I would say I would say that was the one thing we did, and we did a lot of stuff like that. We we worked to get a new concept for schools out, but education was definitely um, wow, where cool. we would, and it would be every couple of years. It wasn't every year. You know, it's not like it was an ongoing effort. I don't want to. I don't want to misrepresent. But when we did it, and we were all in. That's yeah. cool. That's awesome. Like, what about you? Oh, did, did you ever go in for any stuff like that? I'm sure you did. Yeah, it was still do, still do. Um, 
there's some there's some particular things that are close to my heart like um we we d- this defunct now but we did this thing called run for the fall and so uh, across the state there was this group of veterans that would run from like the tip of the state all the way down to the bottom of it is like across it so uh they would do that so you know we built their website for them and helped do some marketing for them um and you know we'd go out and volunteer so that was you know not a direct like you know education or anything like that and then then you know we're in the we're in the capital of the state here so there's yeah. nonprofits everywhere so um there was a few years where every year we would pick a nonprofit and then just do their stuff for them like build mm-hmm. their website or go consult with them solve some problem or whatever so we do that um, you know i i think you just hit on something when we talk about b corps and I, I was thinking about the dozen shops that i know i think almost all of them are really heavy in the nonprofit space Mm. And and the ones that became B Corps early were definitely in the nonprofit space. So maybe to your point, you said it could be the space you're in. Maybe they were starting to lose to other web shops that had that certification. Maybe. And they were like, that's something we need to be. Yeah. Could be. Could be. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see it as a competitive difference maker, but also, uh, you know, it's a general like, you know, wanting to just do better. But I, I don't know that a... Uh, a label like that necessarily stops you from doing better things. And I think that's important to recognize as well. No, I, I think you're right. But I think it's also like saying, um, you know what? I ran a long way. I swam a long way. I rode a bike a long way versus I completed a triathlon. Yeah. You, you, if you don't get the medal, <laughs> if you don't get the B Corp yeah, certification. Really. I know. Yeah, it's cool to get did, the medal. Did you though? <laughs> Did you really run and I'm swim not sure. and bike a long way? <laughs> Did anybody see you? So yeah, but I mean, I, I see what you're saying though. It's like you could you could by being present where good is being done and participating, you can do that without going through all of the the challenges right. and, and the and justly so to get this certification. Um, but at the same time. If you do go through that, boy, you've said, this is what we stand for. This is not marketing at this point. This is a business decision. Right. And because I respect the hell out of people who've done it. I do too. And the, the reality is uh, all those nonprofits that we did work for and everything, we we never made a dime on it, nor were we ever to claim any of that stuff on our taxes. Like if you're doing that kind of stuff, you're just doing it from your own altruism because you believe in the thing or you generally want to make something better. You, you're not going to get any kind of bonus from it. Um, that's for sure. So, th- so this could be a good way to actually, uh, you know, see some sort of bonus out of it. If you get to claim this yeah. title could make a did difference. You, did you make profit off the projects you tried to make profit off of? <laughs> Cause that's probably where engine <laughs> fell apart. We, we weren't making profit on anything. <laughs> I mean, just as soon as we Damn. signed off, as soon as we signed off on the tequila budget, I never, yeah, I can never figure project it out. Was, it was, it was gone. And you know, and that's another thing um, just real quick to say about these B Corps and, and you just hit on it, you know, nonprofit doesn't mean not for profit for you. Mm-hmm. There are nonprofits out there that have substantial budgets and yeah. want to spend them on really good stuff. Oh, and yeah. they hire really good companies mm-hmm. to do that. And they know it's going to cost more. So mm-hmm. again, that's part of being in the space and believing in yourself. Mm-hmm. Yep. So which gene brings me to my hot take of the week. Oh, hot take. Are you ready? Um, If you don't respect yourself, why the hell should anybody else? Ooh, that stinks. This came up two or three times for me last week. Wow. Where I was talking with somebody, different people who really smart, really talented, really good business people who are just kind of letting people walk all over Mm. them. Either from a timing perspective or a budget perspective or a respect Mm. perspective. And so for me, it was just like, (laughs) when I was in the third conversation, I was like, what is happening? Why is everybody suddenly acting like they aren't worthy of Hmm. respect? And I don't mean respect in the way of 
bend down and kiss my ring. I mean respect in the way of, oh, I'm glad you're here. I think you're really going to be able to add something instead of, right. could you just wait a minute? We're, we're going to get to you in a minute once we know what it is we want. Right. That's the kind of shit that came up. And I I, mm. I hope, I don't think this is a shift in the, I mean, it, it definitely not statistically relevant as they say, not, I can't say it. Um, but it's one of those things where I was just like, why is this suddenly happening going into mm. the summer or coming out of the pandemic or what is, is this like a little fuse that's are they related? clients are going to start right. being like more aggressive. I don't know. Mm. What about you? Is it, what did you get to? I mean, what did you get down to the bottom of? Is it no, causal I mean, or corollary? I don't know. I'm still in the middle of it. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, I, I think it's just going to be happenstance, <laughs> which uh, some people might call coinky dink. But, uh, but it was one of those things. Um, there was nothing about industry. There was nothing about size of shop, type of services, any of that kind of stuff. It was just a thing where, Clients had not responded or decided to make changes, but not want to pay for them or things like that. And I am not a coach. I just want to say this right now. <laughs> uh, and I, I've been asked recently if I would coach some people. And I said, you really don't want that. Uh, it's not a thing. Um, <laughs> but I do feel like I get in these conversations a lot and uh, mm -hmm. I'm not on the front lines anymore. And we'll see one of the, one of the things that the Bureau provides, which is something that, uh, struck home to me when I went to the owner summit. Uh, yeah, in Charleston, uh, four years, five years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, is that it, it's one of the things where if you, if you're running a shop or I mean any business, you're at the top of it. You're you feel very alone, mm. right? So you know you Good can't God. go you can't go bitch into your employees about you know your problems as the owner of this business. And you, mm. you, if if you have a spouse, you probably don't even like they're probably tired of hearing your shit anyway. Like. You, you definitely are feel alone. So is this an intervention? Yeah, you start to, God damn it. well, you start to like create stories and you start to create your own yeah. narrative based on when shit happens with a client or whatever. And you can, I can see where you can easily put yourself in a position of like, you know, being below a client, letting them disrespect you. Um, even maybe, maybe that client's doing it subtly too. And you, you know, you just yeah. aren't picking up on it until they're just like, absolutely like having their way with you. Um Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> but it, Whoa. I think it all stems from the fact that, you know, at, when you're running your business, you, you can be very alone in the decision making and, and all that yeah. stuff. And uh, that's one of the things I've always thought the Bureau was best at was sort of connecting that so that, you know, people can have conversations like they did with you or with yeah. each other through Slack or whatever and realize, shit, I don't have to take this shit. Like, yeah. I, I need to make sure that I'm being respected and, you know, you could run it by each other and you know, it's important. So if, I mean, if you're listening to this and you're feeling some of that stuff, I mean, hit up the Slack channels, man. I mean, that's where you yeah. go. Ask those questions, throw it out there. No one's going to make fun of you. Mm. I bet nine and a half times out of 10, someone's experienced it. Yeah. Well, and I'll say, if you don't get help at the Bureau, get help somewhere. <laughs> it's uh, but to your point in these conversations that I had, it, it was definitely more of a supportive thing. And everybody at the end was like, yeah, why am this? No. Right. I'm not going to let them just make this decision because it's your company. Mm -hmm. It's what you build. It's it's not a welcome mat for somebody else to come in and, and take what they want and leave. Mm -hmm. It is a place where you service and offer and give your experience and the team you built in exchange for something of value, right. probably right. money. And uh, right. yeah, so you have to stand up for yourself. And I actually, um, you know, I, there's a, a great book called The no BS guide to time management, hmm. which I think I learned a ton from this book. Like for one thing, if anybody is five minutes late for a call without any kind of notice, they didn't say anything, just let them know you'll reschedule. Don't waste another five minutes waiting on them. Right. I mean, these types of things I thought are just yeah. brilliant. I don't care if it's a bank and you've been waiting to meet with them for a month. As soon as they aren't ready for you and you leave, they are going to call. Mm -hmm. and say, what happened? And say, oh, I thought we had a meeting, but I guess y'all didn't yeah, think so. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. But, uh, yeah. but Gene, what about you? Any hot takes this week? Hot takes, hot takes, hot takes. Hot snakes? No. Mm, <laughs> uh, maybe. Maybe around that possum. Uh, See how we brought it all I back. I tried. This is, this is a different business. Uh, these listeners may not know. I own a gym. Um, and we tried some different advertising. Nice fella. I was so tired of 
the standard Facebook, Google crap. We used an app called Nextdoor. Yeah, which yeah. Is, it, it is. If you're thinking about like trying something new, uh, uh, like a new advertising area or somewhere to get involved, just look outside of the standard stuff that you've always been looking at. We tried that and had instant reaction. Um, <laughs> Stop people. doing that. <laughs> that was the instant reaction. Yeah. <laughs> Because I no, always it was, think of it, it as great. the way you say, hey, somebody's dog got out. Is mm -hmm. this your dog? Yep. Right? Yep. And then you you say, hey, the gym's open this weekend. Get your butt in here. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, the way it works is you sponsor an area. So you sponsor oh, like a zip code that's area. that's really cool. Yeah. And so you're like the sponsor of this area. And it's like, well, we, and it's kind of like, we care about the area. Nice. Come to our place and check us out. And it, it works. I like that. But it, but what is it necessarily to sell next door? It's just to, you know, shake it up a little bit. You know, look look yeah. outside of the standard stuff you've always been doing. If you know, if you keep doing the same stuff you've been doing, you're going to get the same results, right? Wow, Gene, that should be put in a book or on it a was. billboard. I stole it, or you know, behind a plane out at the beach. That would be a long freaking <laughs> trailer, really small type. Yeah. Just do a barcode and we'll scan the barcode. A QR code, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. QR codes are no good. Do a barcode. Oh, no, no good? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll meet you at the barcode. <laughs> well, that's all, right, all I got. Let's get the hell out of here, man. Let's, you know what? Let's play that music for him. We love that music. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll see you next week, buddy.